With men gaining custody of their children in only 7% of cases, Bob Geldof puts forward his own controversial case for increasing fathers' rights. The program contains some strong language. Battersea Park, Sunday lunchtime. Watch the single men with their children drag themselves through the false hours in a frantic panic of activity. The build-up, the all-week anticipation, and then the excitement of being with them. Time dripping too fast, decaying, every second measured and weighed in the balance of loss, losing, going away and fading. Everything must be crammed into this space. Life in an hour, love in a measured fragment of state-permitted time. Feed the ducks again. Macdad and McDonald's. Where else do you go? When my wife left me almost um, ten years ago now, I was bereft. I had loved her and now love had gone. And while at the time I didn't understand what was happening, one has to accept it. What bewildered me and made me grief-stricken was that not just she, but my entire family went away from me. So why were my children gone? Those things that were the best of us. Why couldn't I be with them like I had been for all their lives? I went to the law to try and be with my kids 50% of the time. But like most men who go to court under the family law system in our country, I was left feeling criminalized, belittled, worthless, powerless, and irrelevant. I had entered a world riddled with bias, prejudice, discrimination and hypocrisy. A world where under the guise of justice, children are stripped of their fathers, fathers of their children. This has to change. Going into the court, literally opening the door, a well-meaning clerk passed me by and he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, good luck, Bob. I said, yeah, thanks, mate. And he said, listen, can I give you a bit of advice? And I said, yeah, please. And he said, whatever you do, don't say you love your children. I was taken aback. That was the sole defense I had, if defense is the correct word. And I said, why not? And he said, well, the court think it's extreme if a man articulates his love for his child. I was on telly one night and I mentioned something about this. And what happens to men in this situation isn't right. The law is generally predicated against them. And over the next few months I received what amounted to 70 plastic bin liners full of letters. Now, people have known me for almost 30 years now. And in all my time with the Boomtown Rats or Live Aid or whatever, I had never received that amount of Bob Geldof England type mail. I had no idea there were so many of us out there destroyed by this system. I'd unknowingly struck a chord with tens of thousands of fathers, grandparents, partners, all of them robbed of their children. I often drive in the area where I believe she lives, just in case I might see her. I don't take any further than that. I'm not even sure I'd recognise her anymore, to be honest. I'm, I'm keeping all her cards and everything else. One day when she comes and sees me and finds me, she will. Yeah. 
su Adanfo. The one thing that I couldn't buy is hearing my granddaddy say I love you now. Didn't buy it. And it's dreadful. It really is dreadful. But it's the it's the double pain. It's the pain of my son, and it's my granddaughter's pain, and it's our pain. And the whole thing is just pain and hurt, and and all the all the mixed emotions that you go through. It is dreadful. It really is. Every year, what the government calls only 15,000 cases go to the family courts. In just 7% of those cases are men allowed to live with their children. The courts reduce the rest of them to Sunday fathers, dads who can only visit their kids at weekends. And they're the lucky ones. Four out of ten fathers lose touch with their children forever. What's going on? Why are we allowing this state-sponsored child abuse. I can't stand all this unnecessary pain. And so long as I think it's useful, I'll keep telling my story, even to the most unlikely of politically influential audiences. So whatever you do, don't say you love your children. The courts think it unhealthily extreme if a man articulates his love for his children. This stuff is important to all of us. One in four of all children now live in one-parent homes. Educational standard amongst children of divorced couples are at an all-time low. Children who grow up without fathers are five times more likely to be unemployed and three times as likely to get involved in crime. 80% of all social housing is for single parent families and family breakdown costs the taxpayer at least 15 billion pounds per year. These are the social and economic values of fatherhood. The emotional value is beyond calculation. I'm not a TV presenter, I'm not a journalist, I'm certainly no legal expert and family law is not my field of expertise but it is certainly my field of experience. We've all had enough. Fathers take to the streets, they climb cranes and resort to ever more extraordinary means to bring attention to their plight. Even the Prime Minister and Buckingham Palace were targeted. The frustration boils over and membership of the many support and campaign groups is growing by the day. Why are you doing it? I do it because of a fundamental motivation out of the injustice of my experience at the hands of the family courts, and I'm doing it for my two children. I saw all these thoroughly decent, nice guys, love pouring out of them for their children. They'd quite clearly done nothing wrong, and they got involved in this surreal court system out of which there seemed to be no um, escape. The injustice is so vile. And so, contrary to the, the best interest of the children, which the law suggests that it's supposed to serve, that you just have got to do something about it. It's so unfair what happens to thoroughly decent people that you, you can't actually stop till the job's done. The root of all this pain, this destruction of the soul, lies in a system hidden behind the high walls of the family courts, which decides the fate of our children. Perversely, in a democratic society, these courts operate in total secrecy. There is no way for us to find out how judges make their decisions. I do think we ought to know what's going on. That is one of my hobby horses. I think the family um, court is far too secret. But it seems to be this absolute reaction we force the family courts. Not one will speak to us. Not one will speak to us. Not one. We've asked them all, not a single member, not out of the services, the social services, not out of the, the, the experts, not one. This is a nonsense. 